Good day and Happy New Year. It is January 2nd, 2020. Wow. I was thinking back the first time that I was writing years. I don't know if you ever did that. Maybe I was five or six was my guess. I don't remember. That's a long time ago, and it certainly didn't even have a 1960s in it. Interesting, isn't it? Maybe it was the 40s. I don't know. But I welcome you all. And, and please understand, because of where New Year's Day fell today uh, or yesterday, we've got a strange week. You've got this Thursday and Friday where you're going to get volume that's not as heavy as it normally is. A lot of people are still out. I, when I came to work, I saw the buses were still fairly empty. And as you walk around downtown financial district, not as much traffic as you normally get. But people are coming back by Monday. It'll be normal. The other thing that happens is the market's susceptible to news. It's susceptible right now in different markets is to new money coming into the marketplace. Whatever had to be done in old business was completed by the 31st of December, but now new money placements have to take place, and that is going on, and you're already having a stock market. You're down 100 points from the high, so if you're trying to make this on the first day of the year something work, I wish you the best, but it takes a little time. As you can see, we are down in the euro currency fairly sharply. Their PMIs came in, and they didn't look good. In the UK, theirs is also weak, came in at a low that's uh, the second worst since 2012. We're looking at the end just sort of stable. It's winning just because it's winning. Gold taken off to the upside, even with a stronger dollar. The theme that seems to be going around, and I was reading all the financial reports on New Year's Day, is that a lot of central banks are going to be adding more gold reserves to what they have, and that seems to be the theme rather than old, uh, buying more dollars. In the grain markets, we'll see if the market has any legs as we get further on into the year. It's had a really good rally to end the year up, and maybe it's getting a little rich in the tooth there. I'd be watching bonds and notes. All they did is break going into the end of the year and when I say break futures were breaking so yields were going up and maybe they got ahead of themselves and on the energy market well I'm looking at where we're at and I'm already seeing the IEA and other manufacturers are saying that what's going to happen in the US shale basins is you're not going to get the big capex spending it's time for the debt to come down and some returns to the investors so they're not looking other than the exxons and the chevrons for the john doe companies the smaller companies to be doing a lot of spending which means stability probably not dramatic growth coming out of that, that area which stabilizes price and we're very warm still through a good swath of the U.S. You're not getting that typical winter blast and that's weighing on the nat gas. EIA reports coming out delayed because of oh, how New Year's Day felt so be ready for that. Jobless data came in today down 2,000 and 222. Weekly uh, claims went up 5,000, but when you average a four week average, not a problem there at all. Market final U.S. manufacturing sector data, a bit of an increase up to 52.4 from 52.2. Where you get into trouble is the DEES manufacturing came in 46.3 versus 46.9. They are still weakening there. And you'll hear that Ms. Lagarde of the European Central Bank, she's going to tell countries they've got to start spending to make things better, infrastructure and the like. Sweden's these manufacturing came in at 47.1 versus 45.4. I didn't even have to mention it, just felt like it. Uh, this is the problem for the UK. The market knows it. The market's been expecting it, so don't get too scared by this. But the slowdown is there, and that probably puts the Bank of England on notice that the easing is probably something they've got to be considering now that they're getting the Brexit part resolved. Uh, the EIA weekly stat reports, well, they're going to be confusing because they're a day late. I don't know if we'll get an EIA report today at 9.30 or not. I've been trying to figure that one out and still don't have uh, any notice on it. It could be tomorrow. We'll see where it comes in. One of the things I do want to tell you also is China took some moves starting two days ago where they are easing, if you will, in their, in their sectors of interest rates. So effectively, they did a, a cut today. They have their own ways of announcing them, their own ways of effectively what they're doing, but it amounts to a cut of about a half a percentage point. They're also changing their benchmark status uh, as to what it's going to be. Actually, it ends up a bit lower 
which helps a lot of the smaller corporations. The market looked at that, it used it to open and said it's good, but I don't know. More important to me is how the gold market's reacting to that, and gold is saying, as countries lower interest rates, print more money, whatever they are, this could be the year where gold acts really good, and it had a, ba a banner year in 2020. I want to remind you what we do here. You know, I got gray hair, and our writers here have gray hair. We've been around these markets longer than a lot of people can imagine. And I'm not talking collectively. You know, I always read a firm, well, we have 100 years experience. <laughs> I don't want to even go into that. The reality is how much does the person writing that report have? That's what it really amounts to. And some young ones, they're phenomenal. Some aren't. They're learning the game. We have a lot of experience. And we cover all these different markets and we cover them for the futures, we cover them for spreads, and we cover them for option strategies. So if you're looking for something like that from futures people, talking to futures people, this is exactly what our clientele get from us. And no, you're not gonna find it all over the place. We'll let you try this if you haven't tried it before. We'd like to get your either trading business, you get into our research, whatever it might be. But it comes to you in two ways, email or through any of our trade platforms. So if you're interested in trying this, I'd love to put it in your hands. And we do start new calendar years where people can try it before they can try it again for a short period. How do you get it? Call my staff, see what they'll tell you. You can go to our website, and you'll see under free offers on the bottom right, it'll be there as well. Remember, I am starting an ETF subscriber service this year. Uh, actually, January, I'm already picking, I'm well along in picking the different uh, ETFs and spiders. It's going to be two that I cover in detail. So that's going to be more for the people that are in the stock market and using those vehicles. And look for me to begin that literally uh, in the next week or so. I've already chosen the markets I'm covering and still adding to it. In the meantime, I'll see you this afternoon. Thanks for watching. I'm Ira Epstein.